What is up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of Old Guy's Garage. we got a great episode for you. We're going to start this thing up for the first time on YouTube. You're going to hear it for the first time. Uh, we're going to test the uh, power steering pump and see if we fix the leak or not. I've had a bunch of people ask in the comments if it worked, and uh, that's what part two is. So this is part two of the power steering pump repair. We're going to bleed the brakes, and we're going to take you on a ride. So stay tuned. We've got a great episode for you. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put fluid in the reservoir there, which is power steering fluid. And then we're going to check the reservoir. The clutch is also um, hydraulic. So we're going to put fluid in there. I know that's a little low. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we're going to use uh, dot four. And the, the whole system here is dot four, the clutch, the brakes, and the power steering. So that's empty. We know that for sure. So all that fluid gets pumped back up into here and then it, it builds pressure in the brake system. And then the brakes get more pressure through the power steering system. So this is gonna, I need to overfill it just a little bit because it's gonna, once I start the motor, it's gonna pressurize the whole system. All right, that's overfilled just a little. reservoir it's filled to about right here which is too low And uh, I recommend you go in your house, steal your wife's turkey baster. <laughs> Just leave it in the garage when you're done. Don't try and clean it and put it back. We're going to get some brake fluid out of this reservoir. All right, put that back in your wife's drawer. She'll love you for it. Maybe no. All right, make sure you get brake fluid off any paint you have because it'll take it right down to the bare metal. All right, guys, here goes nothing. Uh, we're going to test it out. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to prime the motor and get the oil pressure up. And then um, before I actually start the motor, we're going to check the power steering fluid again to make sure the level's right. And because it's going to pump some of that fluid back through the system, I want to make sure there's enough power steering fluid in the system that I don't burn up the bearings in the pump. So uh, bear with me. We're going to get in the car, start the motor, um, 
hook up the hook up the battery and uh you're gonna hear it run for the first time thanks for watching anymore so this switch right here turns the power on for my gauges make sure it's a neutral got my trusty her shifter this is the that's the ignition we're not going to turn that on yet we're going to crank the uh, the motor over so just check it out We're starting to get oil pressure. I thought that battery was charged better than it is. Alright, here goes. Turn the ignition off. Great. All right, guys. So, as you heard, the battery's dead. So, we're going to throw it on the charger. For you, it'll just be a second. And uh, for me, it's probably going to be about six hours and it's saying it's full oh it's not not plugged in yet all right let's get it plugged in and um come back in two seconds and we'll start it yes all right guys we got the battery all charged it's the next day let's build some oil pressure and start her up gauges are on it's neutral fuel at 30 pounds we'll do it one more time
Well, you can clearly see it's still leaking. Um, doesn't look like it's leaking from where I fixed it. Uh, looks like it's leaking from the bearings inside the center of the shaft. So uh, it's gonna come out one more time. I'm gonna take it apart and uh, see what's going on in there. Maybe there's an O-ring or something I can replace. Um, but yeah, that sucks. Uh, thought for sure it'd be fixed. Um, motor's obviously cold. Uh, I, want, I want you guys to hear it again uh, before the end of this episode, but um, I can't run it too long without the brake fluid in the, uh, or the power steering fluid, because it's gonna run dry and get damaged the bearings in the pump. So hopefully that hasn't happened already. So stay tuned, we're gonna pull it back off, take it apart. And uh, I'll spare you the trouble of watching me take it off. We'll just get it apart. Um, and uh, we'll take it apart and I'll show you what's going on inside. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. And uh, let's get to it. So I got a bunch of rags under there. But literally looks like it's leaking right from the center of the shaft. Um, before it appeared to be leaking from the center of the pump. Um, and I noticed on the carburetor that the choke had vibrated off and, uh, the bolts were all down here on the manifold, which I was able to fish out with a magnet. But, uh, yeah, check that carburetor out. It's even all chrome plated. I forgot that was like that. I haven't seen it in a while. All right, let's, uh, get the pump off. All right, guys, what I decided to do was put a little more fluid in there just so it doesn't go dry. And I'm going to start the motor again so you can hear it a little better. Um, and it'll, it'll get a little warmed up a little bit. So. pressure pretty quick.
killed it because I, I actually touched the, the steering wheel and power steering pump scream, so it's probably almost gone on fluid. So let's yank it off. All right, so I'm gonna use this giant Phillips to kind of lock the, the pulley up so I can get a grip on this guy. There we go. There's a little ring in there. Try and get that ring out and see if we can pull this out. Lord, let me get this thing back out of this. In Jesus' name, please. Yes, thank you, Lord. No, oh, thank you, Lord. Look at that, guys. That's the power of prayer right there. That thing just like came out on accident. The bearings coming. Let's see what it looks like. <clears throat> There's the bearings. I'll clean that up. They feel bearings feel fine. It's like a skateboard, skateboard bearings. Gears look good. The seal, I don't know if that seal was kind of deformed like that. Oh, here you can see a little better how degraded that seal is. And it's just, it's really soft. It's kind of, uh, like kind of just melted in the brake fluid. So uh, I'm gonna try Granger. I'm gonna see if they can, if uh, I could take this with the outside diameter of this. Oh, there's there's a part number there too that may be helpful. Oh, that's the bearing. Yeah. So if I get the outside diameter of this here that's going to be the same as the inside diameter of that and that seems to be like a metal a ring around the outside of this rubber so this seems very hard this is soft very gooey all right i'm going to go to granger 
and I'm going to go online and look at some parts for this. All right, guys. So I went and checked into um, the seal and um, basically went on a road trip for about six different locations and uh, finally got it. It's right here. And uh, come to find out, it was my fault all along. I put brake fluid in the power steering system, which is what melted the seal to begin with. Um, so I, I was told a while back by one of the manufacturers of some of the parts that I have in the vehicle, and I can't remember which one it was, and I wouldn't name them anyway, um, that I should put uh, brake fluid in that system. Um, because I have a Hydromax brakes, and I also have a hydraulic clutch. So those two both require dot four brake fluid. So I gotta get all the brake fluid out of the system where the power steering pump is so that the rest of the seals and the rest of that system don't start leaking. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna suction out, um, we're gonna suction out the power steering system. Uh, we're gonna press this seal back in Put the power steering pump back on, bleed the brakes, and try and go for a ride. But either way, um, I'll show you uh, if it's fixed or not after we put the seal in. So uh, stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you going along with me. Um, it was quite a quite a journey. It took almost all day, one day, to find out where they were on the sixth sixth place that we went to. Uh, ended up being. Uh, Burnell Hydraulics in Etiwanda. And uh, shout out to TJ. Thanks, TJ, for helping us out. Uh, he hooked us up with this seal. And uh, we ordered it yesterday, and it came in today. So thanks a lot, TJ. And uh, I'll show you their shop um, in just a sec. All right, stay tuned, guys. We're going to suck all that power steering fluid out. And... Um, Put the power steering pump back in, see if it leaks. Thanks for watching. Shout out to Burnell Hydraulics. Thank you very much. TJ, appreciate your help. Hey guys, so I'm down at my brother's house and we're gonna put the seal in the power steering pump. And uh, you guys seen my brother on the channel a few times. Uh, if you wanna get a shirt, where can they get the shirt at, Mike? Uh, castyworks.com. And you can follow me on Instagram too, Casty Works. W it's C A S T I W O R X. All right, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and press that seal in. But before we do that, um, a lot of you guys don't know who my brother is. Um, he is a designer at Rivian, formerly at Kia, and before that, twenty two years at Chrysler. 20, twenty years at Chrysler. Twenty years at Chrysler, and the car behind us step back my brother designed the Dodge Challenger so I'm gonna have my brother uh, just do a little bit of uh, what he was thinking when he was building this car and I remember back when you were designing it and yeah. uh, it was a hush hush thing we couldn't tell nobody yeah and uh, I actually still have some of the original drawings from what year was it when you designed it? At uh, it was 2005. We were sketching on it. We did a bunch of scale models. There was probably, I think I was competing with that time with like five, four or five designers. Um, we all did scale models. Um, and, and at the time it was, it wasn't specifically a challenger. It was, Hey, what, Cuda, if we did it? a, if we did a retro Mopar, I, I kind of focused on Cuda cause I love that car. Um, but it slowly evolved into, because Cuda was a Plymouth, the brand didn't exist anymore. They thought, wow, you know, Challenger is a freaking iconic car from the 70s. So that was the car we sort of targeted and zeroed in on. My particular design was really retro, probably because I just love old muscle cars in general. And we figured out a way to, the engineering team there was really good. They shortened the platform of the, of the Chrysler 300 I think four inches to get the wheelbase short enough for a coupe. Um, and then we did, first we did a scale model, we did a full size clay all in 2005. And then uh, it came out in 2006 Detroit Motor Show. 
Um, at the time, we were owned by Mercedes. I mean, remember Dieter Zetsche? Daimler Chrysler. Yeah, right? he was he was the head of uh, president of Chrysler at the time, and he's like, okay, we'll let you guys do your muscle cars, uh, but we're never going to put it in production. And I knew all all the guys that worked on it. We were so passionate about it. We knew as soon as it got shown to the public, people would go nuts and want to buy the car. So it came out in 2006 Auto Show as a show car, but it was really close to being designed completely on package already. Um, and then it, and then we developed it in production. Uh, Jeff Gale and a bunch of guys in, in the home base followed in production, came out in 2008, and it's been in production ever since, which is amazing. It's one of the longest retro yeah. production cars ever made. It is. It's, it, it's, that stayed the same, yeah. pretty much the same. And it's a really simple design. It's really pure. It's got the right proportions and the right, I think, uh, the right muscle car attitude. And what year is the car behind us? This is a 2019, so I finally bought one. I didn't have one for a long time. This is, uh, the green is called F8, I think. I think it's an original, like, Charger or some period correct color. It's exactly the same color, I believe. Nice. Um, but well, I love the color and the, let's and spin the dark the, wheels. Let's spin the camera around so you can tell us about the car. Okay. All right, so what year is this car? This is a 2019. So the one I worked on was... Uh, you stand over there. I think, uh, I'm not sure what year they changed the, they changed the front end and they redid the interior. And they changed but, the hood. The hood looks really cool. Yeah, this is more like kind of, kind of shaker-like, but yeah. kind of shaker. Um, a little bit different than the original uh, Challenger, but they modified it a little bit. Um, so anyway, this was a slightly facelifted version of the original car. And the reason I really wanted this one is the tail lamps are all LEDs, which was supposed to be the original intent of the car I worked on too. Um, but also the interior was upgraded in this in this generation and it's a really nice interior, much better than the original 2008 models, I thought. So um, it's got cool 20 inch wheels on it. Um, yeah, it's super clean. I've driven this car too, it's super fast, man. Yeah. Fun to drive. It's an RT, so it's a, it's a 5.7 Hemi. I don't know what the horse is, probably close to 400, something like that. I want to put coilovers on it and lower it a little bit. It's a little high, but. Yeah, um, it still looks good, bro. Yeah, it looks good. I'm awesome. happy for you, man. You finally got one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to drive. It's my daily driver, and I commute far. I drive up to Irvine every day from Carlsbad, so it's about an hour drive, and that's my daily. <laughs> nice. Gotta love it. Well, thanks for sharing that, Mike. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put that seal in. All right, cool. All right, guys. So we got the new seal. Um, it's gonna fit. We we did a we mic'd the outside of the shaft, which is the inside diameter, uh, which ended up being 16 millimeters, and the outside ended up being 30. I believe it was 30 millimeters outside diameter. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, press this. We're gonna put it in. Well, here's the old one. You can see how damaged it was. Yeah, that's and that's. Oh my doing because I put brake fluid in the power steering system, which is <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> some bad advice from someone. Yeah, I, I don't know why I was confused about it. Probably because my clutch system and my brake boosting system all take dot four. And I was told to put dot four in this system, which caused that seal to fail. So uh, we sucked almost all the uh, with a vacuum, sucked almost all the fluid out. I'm gonna run power steering fluid through the old system and flush it out and then we're going to put this back on so let's go ahead and uh we're going to press this seal in with the socket and let's see does that look like yeah it's in the right place right, right. Yeah. so we're getting it started a little bit already i probably should have a little better better lighting than that but let's go ahead and there we go there we go and there she is Going in, yeah, it's going in nice. Wow, that was pretty easy. Yep. Praise the Lord. Awesome. It feels like it's sitting in the bottom. Yeah, you can hear it solid. All right, that's all the way in, and then drop the Goomba back in there. Let's see. What's, what's that saying, Mike? When it doesn't go in there? 
Just force it. <laughs> Hit it with a hammer. I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. Probably screwing it up. All right. Now we're good. Yeah, so that's it. Let's go ahead and we'll put this all the way back on and uh, put it on the car. Thanks for all right, so let's flush this system out. We are gonna drop this end in the power steering fluid. Hopefully no, not spill it everywhere. And then we're gonna suck uh, with the vacuum, suck this fluid through here and see if we can flush the system out. All right, guys, we got it all vacuumed out. Um, I'm comfortable with that. It seems to be almost all power steering fluid now and just a little bit of air in the in the fluid. So uh, it looks good. So let's go ahead and install the pump, the alternator, and um, the belt and start it up. See if it leaks. It better not leak this time. Or we'll have to punt, get a new pump. But I'm confident that it's going to be completely fixed. So thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, I'm getting excited. Pretty much all we got to do now is uh, bleed the brakes, and this baby's on the road. <clears throat> you know. <sighs> all right, so... Got power switch right here to the gauges. You'll see the gauges activate. Yeah, see, watch the zero on the this one. Yeah, they got power. She's in neutral. That switch over there is off. We don't want it to start yet. We're just gonna pump it and circulate the fluid. Starting to get some uh, oil pressure. There we go. Pump it once. I'm gonna check the power steering fluid. All right, check the power steering fluid, it's good. It's neutral. pressure time to fire
power steering. Right, guys it's finally fixed um we're gonna end that video right there power steering pump is not leaking and uh, we appreciate your patronage thanks for watching guys um in the next video on the chevelle you'll see us uh bleed the brakes and uh, we'll take you for a ride thanks for watching please like and subscribe see you in the next one peace